Welcome back to Debrek and it's time we talk about uh, the deep state politics. Earlier on you had uh, the Deputy President William Ruto saying that he's ready for the system and uh, saying that he will come with God and one Anchi. Then former Prime Minister Raila Odinga says that uh, Ruto is actually part of the deep state or part of the system. Honorable Kaluma, uh, w what are we looking at? All these accusations, what does it come to even as the country prepares for the 2022 election? It is normal for uh, those uh, who will be contesting the big seat to start raising issues. Some you see it happening in the United States currently. It happens in Europe each time you have an election coming up. So uh, what uh, the deputy president is saying must be understood in that context. But uh, some, if you were to look at mm -hmm. the idea of a deep state, what in my view it confirms is the fact that the electoral process we have in Kenya has not been uh, foolproof in terms of uh, forbidding external interferences. So what the DP is confirming to mm -hmm. Kenyans is that it is aware they are past and there is a possibility of uh, future infiltration into the electoral process. And, and this, in my view, are the things we need to avoid. This are uh, uh, some of the things some you remember the BBI team was proposing in terms of those uh, you know nine point uh, agenda items the handshake is to deal with you remember there was a mention of electoral you know reforms or reforms of the electoral you know system and, and I imagine what we are looking at mm -hmm. is how we secure the electoral system so that it is the will of the people that, uh, you know, determines who leads Kenya. That, 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 to me, is the important question. You are aware some of what right. happened in 2007. You are aware of the do doubts that exist around the electoral, the ultimate ele presidential election results in 2013. You are uh, aware of the issues which arose in uh, 2017. The server is here to be opened to date. So I imagine that the DP is just mm -hmm. confirming to us he knows how, you know, they interfered with the system. Where I fault the DP is where he suggests that as a DP is not part of the, <laughs> the, the, the deep state. He has to be at the very center of it. And I think he could be speaking uh, with the background that he knows the, the people they used to interfere, or the systems they used to interfere with the electoral results, and, and he does not, uh, you know, in his estimation, <laughs> see himself in favor of that team. Either way, let us avoid any interferences or, but, but, or infiltration. Kaluma, of course, I, I see the smile on your face as you say that, but um, is, are his concerns and suspicions coming from a rightful place? Because we've seen the sort of uh, cooperation that is happening between ODM, Jubilee, uh, Wiper joining the, 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 the plan, also kind of joining the coalition with Jubilee. Uh, should he be concerned that uh, there is that, that, that possibility of frustration from the system? Sam, all political parties exist to capture power. What we need to look at is whether they are seeking to capture that power legitimately. And that is why I'm saying that if DP for any reason believes that uh, he's no longer favored by what he calls the, the deep state, which is better known to him, not us, then he should join mm -hmm. you know, this larger team so that we secure the electoral process from any infiltration or interference by uh, deep state or systems or whatever he chooses to call it. But I, I, I don't think that he should be raising that excitement in the public sphere when he is not taking equal steps to help, you know, secure the electoral process. He should join the others so that we have mm -hmm. an electoral process everybody agrees is, is free, fair, transparent and indeed accountable. Okay. Oh, all right. Of course, I will be uh, raising the same question with the uh, Senator Isaac Moura. But before I do that, so we've been seeing um, a lot of meetings happening uh, at uh, the home of Francis Atoli. We've also been see seeing some meetings happening at the home of or the, at the offices of um, uh, the Deputy President William Ruto. Exactly what what what, what are the conversations at the at the, at the home of Francis Atoli? Because even last night. We saw some pictures of a couple of leaders from the Jubilee side, from the ODM side. What's happening? 
some under the constitution we have the freedom of movement freedom of association i don't think it falls within the remit of anybody to second go guess why a group of people are associating or even to question what they are associating about so long as what they are doing is lawful so i'm not worried about the meetings at the dp and whoever he meets i'm not worried about the meetings uh, brother francis atuoli is having and whoever he meets Sam, this morning we are meeting with you. It is not an issue. But uh, my view is that ultimately, if they are meeting over something that concerns uh, the general Kenyan public, it will come to the fore. And if it is legitimate, there should be no problem around it. I see Honorable Rengo and Honorable Francis Atuli meeting to have, uh, you know, some nyama uh, chom. I mean, uh, we, we cannot uh, speculate beyond what we see. As and when they are ready to communicate with us, some um, we will know okay. if it is uh, something that we need to go into, or or, or we take that way. But but really, we, let us not uh, you know second guess. Let people freely meet. Let people freely associate. Let people discuss whatever they discuss. Of course, when uh, and and if uh, their meetings will be about politics, we'll know it in due course. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, we, as you say, we'll, we'll know it in due course, but uh, we are not naive not to, th to not to believe or to think of what's happening because we have heard previously from um, uh, one Francis Atoli and also from uh, one Murade, David Murade from the Jubilee Party saying that Raila Odinga is the rightful candidate for 2022. I will still be get, trying to get uh, Senator Mora, but first, Honorable Kaluma, is it the understanding of the ODM party that Raila Odinga will be um, on the ballot come 2022? Some the ODM party is uh, a critical political party in the country. I think on this account to the Jubilee party, if, if Jubilee remained uh, united, uh, with the current situation in Jubilee, the ODM party is the biggest party in terms of, uh, you know, influence across the country and, and its general, you know, spread across the country. So the, the ODM party exists to capture power and uh, anything that goes in that direction is good for us. I do not know uh, mm -hmm. who will be the candidate in 2022, but I know without a doubt that the ODM party will fill the presidential candidate in 2022, whether as a single political party or uh, being in coalition with other political you know, parties of the same mind. There will be a candidate from the ODM party. Right. Of course, I will be monitoring to see how that happens. I, I, I see how cautious you are. Uh, to really speak about this matter. Uh, but but let's, let, let, let's talk to Honorable Caleb Kositani because he's joining the conversation. And Kositani, apologies for the technical challenges you've been facing this morning. But talking about sure. the deep state politics of uh, the sentiments of uh, William Ruto as well as Raila Odinga, what concerns that the, the side of William Ruto has in as far as the deep state sentiments that we had uh, from the Deputy President? I think, uh, Sam, uh, thank you for having me. I think what we need to first address is where did the deep state uh, talk emanate from? The deep state talk emanated from none other than uh, Oburu Odinga, a brother to, elder brother to Raila Odinga. And uh, you have the audio there where he said that uh, this time they have the system and they have Uhuru who is in control of the system and the uh, deep state. What uh, Deputy President William Ruto said is uh, we are not scared of the deep state. He said, bring it on. We are ready and we will meet at the ballot. We will come with God and the people. And that is where we stand. We are not scared of the deep state. They exist. They are now busy trying to arrest uh, senators because they cannot uh, have a decent conversation and convince people to vote uh, in one way or the other at the, uh, the, in, in Senate. And uh, it is really sad uh, when we find that the democracy that we fought for, even though we were not on the front line, those who are on the front line now are trying to drive us there to single party. When you hear uh, my good friend, uh, Honorable Kaluma, who is a very uh, uh, learned uh, lawyer, saying that uh, we should join that team. Politics is not about joining the other team. It's about convincing the people. Let us go to the Let us take the competition to the people so that they will decide who their leader will be. And uh, Sam, just because I came in late, I want to say I'm happy with the conversations that are going on now. You remember the Atuoli meetings and Morade uh, whiskey drinking parties. They have been discussing and saying William Ruto will not be in the ballot in 2022. And we have been telling them, name your candidate. 
Uh, I am happy they have now settled on uh, Raila Odinga, who is a very good uh, politician, very formidable candidate. The discussion of William Ruto will not be in the ballot is now a closed chapter. They know that William Ruto will be in the ballot, and we are very happy that uh, they have chosen their candidate in the name of uh, Raila Odinga. And now let us compete on issues and not uh, uh, on, 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 <laughs> on, uh, on, on personal well, Honorable Kosita, that's interesting because you said that already they have a candidate in the name of Raila Odinga, but Honorable Kaluma says that they don't yet have a candidate, but they will have one in, in 2022, whether as ODM or as a coalition. But talking about uh, the concerns about the deep state, now you are still the Deputy Secretary General of the Jubilee Party. What options do you have yes. if indeed you're very uncomfortable with what is happening within the Jubilee Party and also the accusations of deep, deep state versus Monanchi? Well, Sam, uh, there are very many political parties in Kenya. Very, very, very many. So uh, nobody should even dream that uh, they will one day uh, knock us out of Jubilee. As you can see, well, Jubilee is in a very rocky relationship. And I believe that uh, Jubilee was taken for a ride on this uh, handshake matter. Because when Jubilee wants to break down its house, when they want to bring down uh, Murkomen, Kihika, make changes in the parliamentary committees, ODM is on board. And when they have an issue in Senate, whereby Jubilee has absolute majority, uh, 28 senator, elected senators, we cannot uh, get the support that is required from uh, from uh, from the from the so-called uh, handshake and coalition partners but uh, it is a welcome thing i think uh, let's not uh, try and uh, lie to kenyans that raila is not the preferred candidate none other than uh, murade and atuoli who seem to be the people who uh, <laughs> gi are giving actions on behalf of the deep state i've said so i pity my good friend uh, honorable kalonzo he had been promised i think also mudavadi had been promised everybody the carrot has been dangling but now i think uh, raila has run away with the carrot so the others should jipanga and go to the people. <laughs> All right. You said that he has run away from, uh, with, with the carrot. I want us to conclude and uh, talk about um, what has really changed Raila. how politics is done in this country. And, of course, uh, last week we saw President Uru Kenyatta on tour of Nairobi. Uh, he was unveiling some three hospitals. The construction was being commissioned. But then again, he went ahead to meet uh, crowds of people. We'll be having those pictures shortly. And as he was meeting, there were those concerns that he is the president who's been telling people that you should avoid public gatherings. But Honorable Kaluma, how has this coronavirus pandemic changed how you politicians do your business? Is it better now? And what challenges are you experiencing? And what do you think will be the solution even as you move forward with the agenda of a BBI referendum and even election of 2022? Sam, it is a very big challenge for politicians engaging with the COVID-19 situation we have, not just in Kenya, but across the world. You see it even in terms of the United States elections, which are coming in less than, uh, I think, 80, year, 80 days now. Uh, and and, and uh, that, of course, is what you saw the president ran into. You you see a president uh, seeking to to confirm whether, you know, the development agenda he has for the city is, uh, is taking place. And, and, and of course, uh, the magnetic um, uh, effect of any leader anywhere. People are going. Uh, President Uru Kenyatta, you know, did not call those people. And that is the challenge we have. So do you have the president strictly within the confines of state house or he can also venture out to, you know, physically confirm what is happening. And Caleb will tell you, that it is a very big challenge, you know, for us, even as political leaders, when we go, you know, down there. People want to come to your home. People want to come where you are. Yet uh, here we are also propagating what is important for containing COVID-19, which is, um, you know, social distancing. It has been a challenge. Our people still believe in physical, uh, you know, meetings, not, not, not keeping far. The level of, uh, you know, technological penetration is not as deep as it is in, in, in some regions. But here we are, you have to serve, you have to go around, you know, confirming what is happening, even at the level of constituency. And I'm generally, you attract people, you have right. to tell them they have to right. keep up. So, so it, it is a struggle we have as politicians, and really the life of, you know, a politician has really changed uh, due to coronavirus. 
Right, and Honorable Kositani, as you end up, so we've been seeing uh, Deputy President William Ruto meeting different delegations at his current office. Uh, we've also been seeing different leaders uh, trooping to Atoli's home. We've also been seeing the President meeting different leaders at State House. So um, what do you think would be the ultimate solution, and do you feel satisfied on how you're playing politics at the moment? Well, I think uh, I am very satisfied with the way the Deputy President is operating. He has been meeting uh, basically religious leaders and fellow hustlers, people who are uh, uh, trying to make a living <laughs> and make ends meet, um, doing whatever small businesses they're doing. And he's been, he has come up with a plan to, uh, to help them uh, advance their business uh, and their dreams. And I think... Uh, those, that's a very good thing. The meetings that have been happening at Atwalis has really been nothing uh, to do with Kenyans. It has had nothing to do with uh, helping uh, alleviate the issues and the hardships that the people are facing uh, through the COVID-19. It has just been whiskey and Yamachoma parties and a big show of uh, who is who and who has uh, the president's ear or who is running, uh, in quotes, let me say that, is running uh, the system. Is in politics about strategy. Maybe they're just laying strategy. Well, I, I agree with them, and, I, and I, let me tell you, this is how people end up saying that elections have been rigged and they, they were stolen because they just keep meeting at the 12th place. It's like it has become a sacred uh, place whereby you go and they get uh, <laughs> political uh, blessings. But uh, from history, we know that Atwali has never been on any winning side. Whoever he has supported politically uh, has always failed, and that is not about to change. So we are happy with him wherever he is and his team. And uh, let them enjoy eating the nyama. You can see uh, even how fat uh, Atwali has grown. I'm happy Kaluma was not there because uh, we Whoa. always meet with Kaluma in the gym. Tani, I'm not sure you can say that. Um, I will not allow you to do body shaming, but all the same, thank you so much for your time. Uh, unfortunately, we are practically out of time because now it's past uh, 7.40. Uh, Honorable Kositani from Soy constituency, Wasingeshu County, as well as Peter Kaluma from Homa Bay Town. And early on, we had Senator Isaac Mwaura, who is a nominated senator. Thank you all for joining the conversation, talk about the state of uh, politics in the country at the moment. And of course, um, uh, after the break, we have Sporty Monday. Willis Raburu and his gang of uh, political analysts and commentators will be coming to look at what happened, including the 8 to 2 scoreline. Sounds like a curfew. All that after the break. Bye for now.